Good morning, Interweb, World Builders Log 18. Today we are going to drop in some large igneous provinces and some hotspots in the simulation. But first, let's get a bit of background info going. So, large igneous provinces shown in purple on this map are basically just really big regions of sustained volcanic activity. Plumes of hot rock rise up through the mantle, break through the crust at various points and inundate a region that is like hundreds of thousands of square kilometers to millions of square kilometers in size. They recur every, say, 10 to 20 million years. They can occur on the land or in the ocean, though when it comes to the sim, we're only worried about the ones on land. And they're briefer events than mountain building events. And as to what they look like, think of them kind of like hotspots, but just like mega hotspots on a much bigger scale. In fact, hotspots, and we'll talk about this later, oftentimes either are remnants of or precursors to large igneous provinces. When they're active, like when all the volcanism is popping off, the region would look kind of like Iceland, except again, much bigger. Volcanoes, explosive volcanoes, effusive volcanoes, fissure vents, that kind of jazz. When they're inactive, so when you have a former large igneous province, the landscape will look a lot like the Siberian traps, or say the Deccan traps here in India, this sort of region here. And what's going on here is that the sustained volcanic activity builds up a large plateau of mafic rock, which can remain as elevated ground for several millions of years, even after the volcanic activity has shut off. And these plateaus can be hundreds of meters, if not several kilometers high, with the highest portions forming in regions that underwent the most intense sustained volcanic activity. And in fact, the Siberian traps, shown here with the black line, they formed, I think it's about 250 million years ago, and we still see these large highland plateaus going on. So the effects of a large igneous province can hold for a long time. So the final two things we need to cover is where we place these large igneous provinces and what effects they have beyond just, you know, terrain building. In terms of placement, large igneous provinces go in basically two places. One, in or around any major rifting events, particularly supercontinent breakup. And you can see here with the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province, CAMP for short, this is basically a big giant large igneous province and it formed just before Pangaea broke up. So major rifting events, consider putting large igneous provinces there. Also, large igneous provinces can just occur randomly. So every so often it's worth just plopping one down just for the hell of it. And if you're running say an 850 to a billion year sim, I would say about maybe six to 10 large igneous province style events would be about adequate. And finally, effects. So again, you got the plateaus, but also so much volcanism is going to cause mass extinctions. Like these are massively destructive events. But interestingly, not every large igneous province will trigger a mass extinction. And we can use a little bit of artistic license to pick and choose which ones will. In general, the bigger the large igneous province, the more likely it is to cause a mass extinction. And to be clear, like all of them will cause extinctions. The question is whether or not they'll cause mass extinctions, which are different things. And if you're interested in learning more about large igneous provinces beyond this admittedly extremely short introduction to them, uh, I would check out the most dangerous type of eruptions, Flood Volcanism Explained by Facts in Motion. I think this is a really cool video. Go check them out. All right, with the background info done, let's drop them in. So what you should do is go through time step by time step every 50 million years and decide whether or not you want a large igneous province to occur. Though they are associated with supercontinent breakup, I tend not to drop them in as part of the first supercontinent breakup, just because it's so far in the past. And for another reason we'll touch on in a second. So I'm going to go forward a time step, we'll go to 950. We'll go forward again, we'll go to 900. Okay, so here we have a rifting event. So I will be inclined to put one in here. So to do this, I step backwards 10 million years. So in this case to 910. Hit G on the keyboard and I'll just draw in like just a random looking shape. Something like like that, say. S on the keyboard, and you get a measurement. This is almost 400,000 square kilometers. So not as big as they can get, but more than acceptable. G on the keyboard, create feature. This is going to be shock horror, a large igneous province, an extensive region of basalts resulting from flood basalt volcanism. Plate ID, well, this whole shtick here is following 300 in this sim, so 300. Beginning time, that is 910. And ending time, I'm going to put 900. So we're saying that the large Ignis province is only active for 10 million years. Again, these are shorter events than orogeny. 
Okay, and then we go name, we'll call it large igneous province, and give it a date, 910. Next, next, and then we're gonna create a new feature collection. I'm gonna save this feature collection as active large igneous provinces, cool. Activen, very nice Edgar, well played. You know what I mean. So I'm gonna triple down the drop down arrow here, go to fill polygon, set draw style, single color, and just give it some random color, something that is evocative of volcanism, let's say an orange color, and go close. And just for a thing that's about to happen, I'm gonna drop the opacity momentarily down to, I don't know, 0.5. Cool. So let's step our simulation forward to the point where the large Ignis province is no longer active, which would be here, 900. And what we want to do now is we want to copy the geometry of the large igneous province and make a feature for former large igneous provinces. So I'm going to go F on the keyboard, select the area, copy geometry to digitize tool. Now I know that these continents are about to split, so I'm going to make one copy on this side of the continent and another copy on the other side of the continent so they can go their separate ways. So I on the keyboard, I'm going to exert some points here and then you know the deal, same as before. We create feature, large igneous province, next, plate ID. So the plate ID is gonna be 200 this time because it's gonna go with green. It's gonna begin life at 900, so after the volcanic activity concludes, and we can say it continues into the distant future, but we'll keep the dating here. We'll keep 910 here, so we know when it first happened. So we go next, next, and then we'll create a new feature collection, create and save. Save this feature collection as former large igneous provinces and go save. All right, and then we're gonna to go to former large igneous provinces in the layers panel, twiddle down the drop down arrow, fill polygons, set draw style, single color, we'll make it orange again, and we will drop the opacity, say, not 0.25. And then I'm gonna bring the opacity back up on the active ones. Large igneous province appears, lasts for about 10 million years, splits, and then we have the former ones here. No longer active, but again, they will have produced highland regions. So the methodology is akin to how we did orogeny in the previous episode. Now recall in the last episode we set up a layer called old orogenies. That's where we put any features that were older than about 450 million years. The idea being that those features would have been ground flat but they could be uplifted later through various orogenic processes. There's no need to do that with large igneous provinces. After about 450 million years, any highland regions here will just be ground flat and they're not often uplifted again in the same way that orogeny is. So I will just leave it as active LIPs or activen LIPs and former LIPs. Okay, and just for the crack, let's put in another one. So again, I'm gonna go through the time steps and find the location where I wanna drop in a large igneous province. I don't think I class this a major rifting event, so let's not put one there. Okay, I'm going to put one here because I want to demonstrate something with hotspots later on. I think our sim ended at 600, correct? Yeah, it ended at 600. So I'm going to go to 650 and I'm just going to dump a large igneous province here. Not associated with rift event, that could be one of the random ones that show up. So let's back it up 10 million years. G on the keyboard, same shtick again. Large igneous province, plate ID is 201. Began life at 660, ends 10 million years later, 650, LIP 660. Next, next, and dump it into Activen, large igneous provinces. For 10 million years, F on the keyboard, select the feature, copy geometry, create feature, large igneous province, begins life after it's active, so 650 in this case, goes on to the distant future. And again, importantly, we'll keep the dating here to remind us of when it initially began. Next, next, I'm gonna put that in former large igneous provinces. Cool, all right, and that is basically it. Go through time step by time step, drop in large igneous provinces as you see fit, biasing them towards rifting events, but also some random ones thrown in just for the fun of it. Have about six to 10, and don't worry about any ones that would occur in the ocean, because remember we said they occur every 10 to 20 million years. Lots of stuff will happen in the ocean. We're only marking what's happening on the land. Large igneous provinces, done. Let's talk hotspots. All right. Hotspots. Hotspots are isolated volcanic events or instances of volcanism that occur independent of plate boundaries. Usually, most volcanism occurs at plate boundaries. Hotspots need not. Examples would be 
Hawaii here, or rather the entire Hawaiian island chain. Iceland could be viewed as an example, though I think some people class it a large igneous province. And Yellowstone might be another example. So it follows then the hotspots can occur in the ocean or on land. And in general, they can kind of occur anywhere on the globe. Like you could just put them down at random and chances are you're fine. Though again, there are biases and preferences here. Number one, good place for a hotspot is at the center of old supercontinents. Because remember, supercontinents break apart because mantle plumes come up and fracture the crust. Well, if you got a mantle plume, you got a hotspot situation. Number two, directly on the opposite side of the globe from old supercontinents is another great place to put hotspots. In or around rifting events in general, another good place. And in any areas where the crust is weak. So in regions of slab rollback, see the first video of this G-plate series for more on that. In and around mid-ocean ridges, uh, plate triple junctions is another good place or in and around failed rifts. But really, if you just want to chuck them down at random, you're good. Oh, and also recall from the Large Igneous Province section, hotspots can be precursors or remnants of Large Igneous Provinces. So also in and around them. And I'm sure we're all aware of this, but when they form in the ocean, you get the island chain stuff we talked about. Mantle plume rises, breaks through the crust, builds an island on a plate that is moving. So eventually that island will move away from the hotspot. So it will stop growing, erosion will take over, and it will grind its way down. And a new island will form over the hotspot, so on and so forth. So you end up with a chain of big island, smaller island, smaller island, all the way down until the islands have been so eroded that they are just sea mounts or sea stumps. And these chains can be long, like thousands of kilometers long. Okay, I think that's everything on hotspots, so let's go back into G-plates and start dropping them in. Oh, sorry, two more things. So firstly, hotspots don't tend to persist for very long. 1 to 200 million years is about the max, and the landforms hotspots create also don't tend to hang around very long after the hotspot is inactive. So that implies that there's no real point dotting in hotspots throughout the entire simulation, only in the last, say, three to four time steps before your present day. So for me, that would be if present day is 600, anywhere between 800 and 600 would be my hotspot window. And the second thing is, don't put them in at every single time step of 50 million years. Think in smaller increments here. Think in increments of 10 million years. So I'm going to just for the hell of it, go back, say 60 million years to like 660, for example. And I am going to switch to uh, orthographic view and I'm going to drop a hotspot in, we'll say here, just because. Although I believe this is in and around the center of the old supercontinent, somewhere here. Let's go here, say, okay? M on the keyboard and the tree just click. That is it, that easy. Create feature, we're looking for hotspot. Location in the mantle linked with high igneous activity. Hit next. Now for plate ID, we don't wanna give it a plate ID of anything that's moving because the mantle plume, this boy here is static. The plate moves over, but it remains in the same place. So the plate ID we reserved for static objects was plate ID one. Beginning time, we'll say 660. We'll go into the distant future and we'll call this hotspot 660. Then go next, next. And we're going to create a new feature collection, create and save, and save that as hotspots. We'll go over the hotspots here, twiddle down the drop down menu, and you can set draw style, change the color, because that doesn't really, blue doesn't really stick out very much. So let's say um, red. Yeah. Red is volcanic. And we go close. So the next thing we want to do is we want to mark the path of the plate over this hotspot. Basically, like, figure out where the island chain will be. So hit F on the keyboard, select the hotspot, go to copy geometry to digitize tool, hit M, then go down to create feature. And we're looking for motion path, tracks absolute plate motion over time. Hit next. Now for plate ID, we want to give it the plate ID of the plate that it is currently over. So this is 101, if I recall correctly. Relative plate ID, leave it at zero. Beginning time is 660, correct. And this would be a hotspot trail. We go next, then we go add. This process is much the same as adding flow lines uh, from 660 to zero in increments of 10. Insert 660 to zero, wonderful. Hit OK, then next, and then new feature collection. Boy, we're making a lot of feature collections today. Create and save, and save that feature collection as hotspot trails, and go save. 
And now, assuming we've done everything correctly, oh, let's change some colors here. So hotspot trails, twiddle down the drop down menu, go to set draw style, and then go single color. Again, something volcanic. Uh, yeah, let's go orange again. And we'll go create. And also let's move hotspots above hotspot trails. Wonderful. Okay, so what we have now is we've marked our hotspot. And as we progress through the sim, we'll see a line appear emerging from the hotspot with each of these little arrows here being indicators of 10 million years. And if we play this forward, it'll give us where that island arc would be. So, but again, over the hotspot, you'll have the newest, youngest island. And then increasingly further away, you'll have more and more eroded islands to the point where at the end here, you probably have a bunch of sea mounts or sea stumps. All right. And that, believe it or not, is hotspots done. That is all you need to know about marking them in G plates. Super, super easy. But we did say we put in this random large igneous province. Let's use as an excuse to show remnant hotspots. We go to 650 and just as this is turning off, we'll hit M on the keyboard or becoming inactive rather. And let's drop in a hotspot. Now, if you're only aware of Hawaii as a hotspot thing, it's easy to think of them as just being like a single point through the mantle, but you can totally get a cluster of little hotspots. So let's do that. Let's just put in a little cluster like that. All right, we go to create feature. We want hotspot, plate ID. Again, hotspots are immovable. They are static. The plate moves over them. So we'll give it a static plate ID of one. Beginning time, 650, sure. And this is gonna be hotspot 650. Next, next. And we'll put that into hotspots and we'll go create. Done. F on the keyboard, select those hotspots, which is just very difficult to do when your mouse is giant like mine. So uh, select your hotspots, go to copy geometry to digitize tool, create feature. This time we're looking for like last time motion path. We put in the plate ID, the hotspot is under. So that would be 201 in this case, this purple stuff. Relative plate ID is zero, begins at 650, cool. And this is a hotspot trail. Next, add some times. So again, begins at 650. So we put in 650 insert 650 to zero. Perfect. Hit OK. Next. And we'll put it in hotspot trails and go create. And again, if we just play the simulation, we should hopefully see nice trails happening. Very nice. So we're in a cool situation where we kind of have, we'll have like a trail of dormant volcanoes here from when the hotspot was underneath that portion of the land. So like here and that trail makes its way into the ocean and then we kind of have a more traditional hawaii like chain happening all right that is that did i forget to i don't think i forgot anything i think that is literally that short and sweet i guess in the next episode we're going to talk topologies and hopefully how to export and make videos etc as always thanks to world building pasta whose methodology this is thanks to vanga van gogh resident artist here over in artifexia thanks to all of you for watching and massive massive thanks to all the patrons who help support the show i really really truly appreciate it have a good one and until next time it grouse